Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Boy, is it cold today. It's 20 degrees and we have a few days of single digits coming our way. I'm not going to stay out here very long, but I had a couple of things I wanted to show you. Now the topic for today is more on seed starting. I know this is the third video on that topic, but there's just so much to share with you. So let's dive in before I freeze. You'll recall that I shot a video a few weeks ago about winter sowing. And I've been hearing from a lot of folks saying they're trying it for the first time this winter, which I think is very cool. So I wanted to give you a quick update on mine. Now I've been keeping an eye on them and I'm happy to say that the soil is staying evenly moist, so that's important. It's not drying out, especially since we've been having a fairly dry winter so far. But the other thing I wanted to tell you is that nothing has sprouted yet, and that's normal. It's just too darn cold. But that's what's happening so far, and I'll give you updates in the coming weeks. Now while I'm out here, there's something really important I wanted to tell you. First of all, look at this soil. <laughs> it is hard as a rock because it is frozen solid. I know everyone is anxious to start preparing their gardens, and that obviously doesn't apply to me just yet. But here's what you need to know first. If your soil is still cold and wet, please don't work with it because you will destroy the structure of the soil. I jumped the gun quite a few years ago, and I have never forgotten the consequences. I ended up with a garden full of dirt clods. Seriously, I mean hard dirt clods for the entire season. So wait until your soil is more dry and crumbly. Now, before you make a decision to work with your soil, what you want to do is a very simple test to see how wet it is. And so you want to grab a handful of soil, squeeze it in your hand, and if you just created a mud pie, it's definitely too wet. But if you instead look at the soil and it looks pretty good and you poke your finger into it and it crumbles apart, that's perfect. So try to be patient. Okay, let's head back inside. This is just a friendly reminder that I have a brand new book coming out, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. I wrote it for all levels of gardeners from beginner to master gardener. This will help you identify both the good bugs and the bad bugs in your garden and provide you with all sorts of methods for dealing with the bad ones using effective organic controls. This is going to be such a great resource. Now I shot a video a few weeks ago that gave you a sneak peek inside the book, so be sure to check that out. But if you pre-order my book now, you will receive special bonus material that is not in the book and can't be found elsewhere. It contains my best tips for growing your favorite veggies and some that you might not have thought of. All you have to do is order it from your bookstore or preferred online source and email me your order confirmation. My email address is susan at susansinthegarden.com. Then I'll send you a link to the bonus content. This is a great deal. Okay, let's get back to seed starting. You'll recall that my husband Bill and I are growing onions and leeks from seed. Now, I also have some leeks that I'm starting using the winter sowing method outdoors, but I thought I just want to have a backup of a few leeks just in case. In the foreground is Bill's onions, and here are my leeks. When you grow either of these from seed, it's really important to let them grow a few inches and then trim them back to about two inches in height. And what that does is it makes the plants develop good root systems rather than grow a lot of greenery up here. You really want them to have a good root system. So last week Bill trimmed these back to about two inches tall. He's letting them grow about four inches tall and then he'll cut them back again. So it's time for me to trim back the leeks now. The next thing I wanted to talk to you about is seed treatments. Now the vast majority of flower and vegetable seeds do not require any special care before you plant them either indoors or in the ground. But there's a few exceptions and most seed packets will tell you if some special treatment is needed before you plant the seeds. 
So let's go through the different types of treatments and examples of when you would use them. The first type of treatment is called vernalization and it promotes flowering. So it involves exposing the seeds to cold temperatures for a period of time so you can make them think they've been through a winter, believe it or not. I swear, I'm not making this up. When it comes to veggie crops, this is a really useful strategy for growing artichokes in cold climates. And that's because they typically are not very productive in that first year, but instead the second year and beyond that. Well, because we're in a cold climate, we have to grow artichokes as annuals. And so that means we don't have a second year. So by using this strategy, it does work and it has been great for us because we get a really nice harvest of artichokes. So let me show you how to do it. The first thing you wanna do is take a baggie and put in some lightly moistened peat moss, or in this case, germination mix. Both will work well. And you'll notice that I have labeled what I'm growing, Tavor artichokes, and the date that I'm putting them into the refrigerator. So I'm going to put my seeds into the bag and sort of mix them into that. You don't have to worry about it too much. And then I'm going to put that into the refrigerator for two weeks be sure to mark your calendar so you don't forget that. You're going to take them out, pull the seeds out of that mix, and then start them indoors just like you normally would. Now, vernalization of artichoke seedlings is another thing that you can do in addition to doing this special seed treatment at the beginning of the process. All you do is two weeks before you're going to plant your artichoke seedlings out in the garden, you put them outside and expose them to cold temperatures, but make sure that the plants don't get frosted because you don't want that to happen. But you do that for two weeks before you plant them out into the garden and they should be productive for you that first year. The second type of treatment is called stratification. And it's another way to fool seeds into thinking winter is ending and spring is about to begin. So you're trying to duplicate those types of conditions. It's a longer process than vernalization because the goal of stratification is to improve germination. This technique is advised for starting milkweed seeds and that's what you're looking at right now. One month before you want to start your seeds, set a moist coffee filter or a paper towel on a plate, sprinkle the seeds onto it, fold the filter or towel around the seeds, put that into a baggie, set it in an airtight container and place it into the refrigerator for four weeks. And again, remember to mark your calendar so you don't forget about them. Then you're going to start your seeds as you normally would. The third and final type of treatment is called scarification. And just think of the word scar. It's a method used on seeds that have particularly hard outer coats. This mainly applies to New Zealand spinach which is what you're looking at here. And just a side note, it's not technically a spinach, but it has a similar flavor and is way more heat tolerant than regular spinach is. Now my research has shown that nasturtiums, morning glories, lupins, and sweet peas also benefit from scarification. You can accomplish this in two simple ways. Either nick or scrape each seed with an emery board or a piece of sandpaper, or Soak them overnight in water before you plant them. That causes the seeds to swell, which in turn breaks the outer coat. I've also found that you get better germination with parsnip seeds if you soak them for a few hours before planting them. Their seeds don't seem all that hard to me, but it is common practice to soak them so that you get better germination. So I've got three announcements for you. The first one, is that on Thursday, February 11, I was on the Joe Gardner podcast with host Joe Lample, and that was great fun. If you missed it, don't worry. You can always see older episodes. Just either go to your podcast app or go to joegardner.com slash podcasts, and you'll see them. Just look for episode number 195, and you'll find me. 
My second announcement is that my first garden column of the season for our Sunday newspaper is going to be on February 21st. And of course, I always put them on my website as well. I'm looking forward to a fun growing season and the opportunity to write about some really cool topics. And my last announcement is that on February 25th, I'll be giving a virtual presentation about raised bed gardening, which is one of my favorite topics. It's going to be for our Master Gardener program here in Spokane, Washington. It is from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific time, and it costs $5. That money just goes straight into our Master Gardener program, so it's a really good cause. It's a great opportunity for you to learn more about raised bed gardening without having to leave the comfort and safety of your home. So I hope you'll check it out. I'm gonna put information about the class and the other gardening classes that are going to be put on virtually this year on my website, susansinthegarden.com. Okay, that's everything for now. I thought I'd show you that my waxed amaryllis is blooming now. Isn't that a beauty? I've never grown waxed amaryllises before, so I'm really enjoying it quite a lot. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you next week.